joining us this morning. Uh, we're delighted to have your company online. Um, welcome to uh, a uh, three-way event uh, hosted by uh, our good self, CDW. Uh, the agenda today is that uh, we're joined by our good friends um, from Reddington and Veeam who are going to uh, talk to us about Veeam on Azure, uh, what that means to your business, uh, and obviously where you can take uh, this solution in terms of business continuity and how that might affect your business in the in the times that we live in. Um, hopefully you'll find the content uh, uh, to your interest. Uh, please feel free to contact uh, uh, any of the uh, email invites that you've had, uh, any of the team on the uh, on the call uh, if you have any questions. Uh, we're going to have a quick demo as well and a Q and A at the end. So. Um, Hopefully you'll find the content interesting. Uh, I'm going to kick off. I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of CDW, um, basically a word uh, from your sponsor. Um, so you may or may not have heard of us, but CDW uh, is a uh, global reseller and systems integrator. Um, we're very much uh, an end-to-end uh, technology provider, uh, and we talk to our customers very much about you know, what is it their business requires, uh, and, and what are the challenges that they face in the market? What matters to your organization? Rather than trying to sort of box shift uh, individual solutions uh, into your IT infrastructure. So uh, who are we? Where are we from? Well, we're a, uh, a, C, a CDW is a, a Chicago-based organization. We're listed on the NASDAQ. We're a Fortune 500 company. Our ticker symbol on NASDAQ is CDW, if you'd like to go and check out some investors' uh, information there. Uh, our turnover revenue for uh, financial year 2019 was just under $19 billion, that's $18.8 billion. Of that, um, almost half of that uh, was US public sector, so US federal government, uh, education and healthcare in, in the United States. Um, we are, have 9,900 employees, nearly 10,000. Again, probably the majority of those, 70% are in North America. Um, but the stat that we're kind of most uh, proud about really is that um, uh, over half of them are actually in service roles. So service delivery, ensuring that the services that we're providing to our customers are uh, of the very best quality. Um, we are a, uh, a Fortune 500 company, but we try and focus on uh, not only enterprise, but also a tier two and SMB businesses. So to that, we have uh, over a quarter of a million customers worldwide. Uh, of every shape and size, and we believe that this sort of broadness and depth uh, is a very uh, a key advantage to to new customers that might be looking to work with us. Um, we are a uh, glass door organisation as well, uh, and uh, numerous other accolades that you can visit on our website. Uh, we consider ourselves to be probably the first uh, and at the moment only independent international um, value added reseller and systems integrator. Uh, obviously, as I've mentioned, we're based in in, uh, in Chicago in the United States, uh, but we have presence uh, all over the world. Uh, our international business is headquartered out of London in the UK, uh, with offices all over Europe, so uh, Ireland, uh, the Netherlands, uh, and uh, I'm now moving down here into the Middle East uh, with our, our HQ for the region in Dubai um, for Middle East and Africa, uh, but also offices in in, uh, in Cape Town and Johannesburg. And then in the Far East, we've got long established offices in Hong Kong, Singapore, and then down to Australia. Um, so, uh, you know, we don't have presence at the moment in two, two continents, South America and Russia, uh, but they are uh, definitely on our, uh, our radar and, and our ambitions are moving forward. Thank you. So a bit about uh, what is it that we do? What's our portfolio? What do we bring to market? Well. I think probably one of our biggest points of difference is, is the partnerships that we that we hold. Uh, so if you think about any top tier vendor, and of course today we're delighted to be uh, our, uh, with our friends from Veeam here, um, we hold probably the highest global accreditation for any technology that you might care to mention when it comes to in IT infrastructure. So we're very proud to be an infrastructure based company, and you can see on that slide that there's pretty much every uh, top tier uh, blue ribbon band brand that you can think of uh, is uh, in our portfolio um, and so we're delighted to be able to partner 
uh, when we talk about Microsoft uh, and Microsoft Gold Partnership. There are a number of Microsoft accreditations that we hold globally that no one else in this region holds. So, for instance, we're a Microsoft accredited managed service provider in Azure, and that's a very hard um, accreditation to achieve. Uh, and we're able to provide uh, a plethora of managed services in, in Azure with Microsoft's uh, blessing and sign off and certification. Thank you. So in terms of how we go to market and how we interact with our customers, um, where we uh, try and add most value is really on the journey. So it's really about uh, how we can engage with you, understand your business outcomes, understand what the technology solutions are in the market and align uh, our pre-sales expertise. So that's consultants. And we're delighted to partner with companies like Reddington that can expand our knowledge base and augment the service that we deliver around consultancy. Um, and then uh, deliver through supply chain. So that's the physical delivery of equipment and services and products, and something that we feel that we do probably better than anybody worldwide. And we're active in over 150 countries, uh, and we, we, we see uh, challenges on that front every day that we overcome. Thank you. So if we were to go down a layer and start talking about well, what are the technologies that we see in, in the marketplace right now? Well, we're definitely, uh, as you might imagine, uh, very uh, engaged in the cloud services arena. So data and IoT, uh, cloud services and connectivity is probably where we spend a lot of our time. And uh, most of our customers are struggling with uh, what's their road to digital transformation. You'll hear our colleagues uh, talk about how their product today can, can assist with digital transformation, make their company more data agile. Uh, and that's something where we spend a lot of time. Also, as you might expect, voice and video uh, and networking at the moment are very high on people's agenda. We're doing an awful lot of work around how people can connect their coworkers and customers much more effectively. So those are just a sort of a few of the uh, technology areas that we're involved with. Uh, and what we aim to do is wrap all of those, uh, both in terms of professional services, so that's the consultancy and the engineering that you might need to take those to market, but also the ongoing care. So uh, that's uh, not only the managed services that I've spoken about already, uh, but also uh, basic maintenance and support on, on hardware and software. And also then, how do I get the best out of my investment and that's an area where we think we excel and that's something that we call adoption and lifestyle so i might have my microsoft team suite uh, but how do i get the best out of it how do i get all of my co-workers and staff uh, and customers to be collaborating uh, as well as they can and that's somewhere where we provide value-added content ideas uh, and guidance thank you so uh, a little bit about uh, our, in, in uh, some, some, I guess, some numbers and some stats around how do those services break out? Well, uh, as you'd expect, our managed services are 24 by 7, 365 um, globally. Uh, we have a multilingual service desk. We operate a service desk here in the Middle East, and we're able to offer all local languages. Um, it's backed up by not only our own field engineers, but also a network of uh, trusted uh, third parties across the Middle East and Africa. Uh, and we're delighted also to be able to deliver security cleared uh, agents uh, and engineers into those customers that, that need it. Thank you. Uh, no uh, presentation these days would be uh, complete without talking about our cloud services. Um, this is something that is a presentation or an hour presentation all of its own, uh, but I would just like to sort of put a mention into the into the uh, attendees online today to talk about our cloud plan offering. So uh, CDW offers a uh, package service uh, cloud plan, which is effectively a roadmap that allows you to understand how do I go from where I am today, no doubt with a number of uh, public and, and private cloud offerings and on on-premise applications? How do I go from where I am today to where I'd like to be in the future in five years' time? Whether that's fully cloud, whether that's not fully cloud, whether that's uh, using the best of uh, what's out there from an application and applet point of view. So it's something that we uh, we spend a lot of time with customers talking about 
and it's available to, to everybody who, who wishes to, uh, to have a conversation about that. Um, we also have a cloud care product. So just as we've spent the last 25 years uh, providing managed service in the data center, typically in customer data centers or in ISP hosted data centers, co-location facilities. We also now, uh, our ambition over the next five to 10 years is to be your managed service partner in the cloud, wherever that may be. And so we have a whole suite of cloud care products and services, uh, package services that we can bring to you uh, to, for you to start concentrating on building the business and outsourcing uh, the management of your cloud services to an organization like CDW. Thank you. So in, in summary, you know, CDW are attempting uh, to deliver a simplified world uh, to you, the IT uh, consumer. Uh, we're trying to orchestrate all of those partners that you saw at the beginning. Uh, we're trying to use our expertise that I've described in our consultancy and engineering um, teams. Uh, we're looking at an integrated technology approach that says one size does not fit all. It may well be that you may want some applications to live in the cloud and some you just don't want to do uh, to do that at all for data or security reasons. Uh, and that's where we help you with the risk management and mitigation about how that might play out in the long term. And of course, you've got to think about what the cost and complexity uh, of uh, the future of an application might be within your business. That's how we approach our, our business, and um, we've, you know, been successful in in uh, uh, talking to a fair few customers, not only in this region but further afield. Um, I'll finish the, the, the this slide deck with a, a kind of vanity slide. Hopefully, you'll recognise a, a few of those brand names, uh, both locally and globally, uh, and we're delighted to work with those organisations uh, and the system on their journey. So if you have any questions after this presentation, obviously we'd be delighted to work with you. That was a little bit about CDW. Hopefully I haven't taken up too much of your time. And now we can get on to the, the, uh, the great stuff and hear from, uh, from uh, the guys at, at Rennington. Both Sonny and uh, Shab are going to, uh, going to walk you through uh, this morning's uh, tech overview and demonstration. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks, thanks, Matt, for uh, this uh, lovely intro. Uh, so today I'm going to start the session with Wim, uh, what exactly it does. So let me quickly share my screen. I'm sure everybody will be able to hear me. Okay. So, so today's agenda for uh, this session is uh, to discuss about the business continuity, which revolves around uh, on to the Azure platform using Veeam. So uh, as, as Matt said, uh, I'm working in a distribution, uh, Reddington, and I take care of Veeam as a product. Uh, uh, from the past three years, I'm working on this product, just to give you a brief background, and I'm Veeam certified architect. So without wasting much time, let's quickly go ahead with the agenda. So today we'll start with the corporate overview uh, of Veeam itself. Uh, then what does digital transformation mean when it comes to the business continuity? What are the challenges associated with it? Uh, then we'll go uh, maybe briefly on the key concepts of the backup. Uh, what uh, principles you have to follow when it comes to the backup industry? Then uh, we'll start with uh, the most important part of these uh, this session that how does Microsoft and Veeam together can solve your pro uh, problems when it comes to the data continuity, the business continuity, the integration, what level of integration does Veeam had with Microsoft, uh, Microsoft specific to Azure? Uh, then what kind of cloud tier does uh, Veeam has which integrates with Azure? Uh, then a bit of, you know, deep dive into Microsoft Azure uh, using Veeam. Uh, then the most important part, which is the demo, which I like the most. Then we'll finish up with a summary. So let's quickly start with the corporate overview. Um, as uh, means Veeam is a product which I guess most of the industries are already using it. So if I say, you know, in my language, like last year, uh, uh, they have already booked in Q1 2019. It's a 1 billion company. Uh, it comes in the 500 fortune. Uh, 
companies at the top it serves in 160 countries more than 375 key customers all over the world and it it is a hundred percent channel driven company which is being driven by channel via resellers partners like cdw now the important part is uh, again the satisfaction level the nps score veeam is uh, one company who focuses more on the customer support so if we see an nps score veeam scores 75 which is you can see in the list that veeam is coming at the top so which means when it comes to a support for their product veeam is always available it gives you 24 by 7 support which results in the nps uh, value overall so if you talk about uh, you know uh, the technology veeam clearly itself is a market leader when it comes to uh, you know the backup of the virtualization cloud management cloud flexibility so in gartner they veeam is again uh, named as a leader uh, in forester also it's named as a leader and in idc also it's it is named as a market share growth so this this is some of these are some of the you know um, capabilities of veeam with which you can see that veeam is uh, becoming uh, you know a number one product when it comes to your backup management cloud management it becomes a centralized way of managing your data of your entire infrastructure now the second part is uh, today we are talking about uh, a business continuity model so veeam is a product which gives you a uh, business continuity in and out uh, with the help of certain features so what exactly digital transformation means so in this era everybody is talking about you know going digital so if you see everybody uh, is a kind of using uh, a software a uh, a technologies which are uh, kind of you know um, uh, executing data on daily basis so for example if you talk about a technology called ai if you talk about a technology called big data if you talk about any technology any technology which runs on a compute generates data and this digital transformation if you talk about in today's world they have done one survey wherein 53 percent of the coe ceo says that their top priority is in 2020 to see their growth how quickly they grow their data right and that data comes from different different types of applications which are running in a data center whether that application runs on premise whether that application runs on cloud that application is at the end of the day is generating data and on the other hand 75 percent of the ceo believes that digital transformation is the number one activity on their agenda which they are going to drive when it comes to their business means they want their their uh, you know enterprise the company to become a digital transformative company wherein they're using the latest digital technologies and those technologies are uh, you know generating data on daily basis on every second so what what is being predicted in the market that in coming i guess it's already been happening that digital transformation is driving the businesses if you talk about today uh, most of our, most of uh, all of us are working from home and we are using all those technologies by sitting at home which are being connected somewhere at the back end whether in cloud or on premise so digital transformation has already been started so what has been predicted that if an organization continue to struggle in the maintenance of legacy IT mechanism today, they'll not have the budget or the manpower to achieve the transformation that they aspire to. For example, in today's world, we have so many applications which are running, which are linked with each other. So if as an organization, you don't fall in that line and you don't upgrade your technology you may fall behind the line right so for example in today's world there are lots of managed services which are being provided by microsoft azure you don't have to provision your infrastructure on premise everything is being pre-provisioned you only have to just you know 
click on those services and you have to provision that services for you what is the benefit for you if you follow that path you are not investing your time on to on premise infrastructure for managing it uh, you know for maintaining it everything is being taken care by microsoft azure the only thing wherein you have to fo focus is the data is the application is the business which you are running inside that app so digital transformation becoming uh, an important factor here which gives you the business continuity what is preventing transformation today most of us especially in this part of world wherein you know when we talk about specifically a cloud technology lots of people here today also say that you know cloud is a platform which is not 100% managed by an organization you know these are some of the things which comes up when we talk about a cloud but first of all you need to know that cloud is a managed services which is being designed for an organization so why an organization is being prevented doing a transformation lack of it skills or transformating expertise dependencies on legacy system and technology which would which you think that the application or maybe that part of an application will not run on to uh, an and uh, and on cloud business lack of time and budget there are some organization which thinks that we don't have time and budget to allocate our resources on cloud which is not a right thing because when you move your workload on to cloud it's all together a different thing you can manage you can uh, you can modify your resources according to your budget and requirement and there are some organization which thinks that it's a risk to their business and customers that the data is not safe in cloud right so these are some of the uh, things which organization think that they don't want to use it and they don't want to transform their organization uh, digitally which uh, kind of hinder their business continuity because when it comes to business continuity your resources should be up and running 24 by 7 and to get that kind of sla for an on premise customer they have to reduce they have to uh, you know um, they have to expend a lot they have to spend a lot on the environment on the resources which they are not supposed to because being an organization their main focus is to focus on their businesses not on the things which are related with id so with veeam what all things we delivered so the first thing which veeam does which veeam is best of uh, backup modernization in today's world uh, it's a kind of hybrid environment or a kind of 100 percent cloud environment wherein the need of protecting your data is there so with the help of we uh, we kind of you know protect your entire infrastructure whether it runs on premise whether it runs on cloud whether it's a hybrid environment right when we say hybrid environment most of the organization nowadays is choosing the uh, flexibility to keep their either half of the resources on premise and half of the resources on cloud to get a mix and match of everything then the last part is the data security which is the top priority for every organization wherein they want to protect their data they want to automate their data from uh, let's say ransomware attacks or any kind of you know god forbid scenarios so these are the three major things which we delivers in today's world to transform your uh, you know the entire it uh, uh, experience uh, using your business continuity platform so when we are talking about a backup what are the key concepts for the backup uh, so the principal concept for backup if you go anywhere whether you go on cloud whether you go on premise whether you go hybrid three two one this is a golden rule which every organization follows uh, when it comes to uh, backup so three copies of backup you always need to keep as an it standard two on different media one off site this is where everybody was following the correct rule Right. now with veeam what we have introduced we have added one more uh, you know kind of rule with it which says zero zero means you are already compliant you already have a three copies of your data two sitting on different media one on different side 
but what is the probability of that data which you have let's say on sitting on three different media is 100% recoverable you need to be 100% sure that the data which you have backed up is 100% recoverable whenever time comes so with wing we gives you a flexibility we gives you a surety that the data which you have backed up is 100% recoverable so we have some algorithms we have some technology which gives you this kind of flexibility which gives you avoiding any kind of recovery failure whenever time comes now business continuity this is the most prime factor for any organization so if you are uh, an organization which uh, runs a kind of business or an application wherein your rtos and rpos are the most important part so just to give you a brief overview what exactly rto means and what exactly is the rpo means rpo means the recovery point objective so your entire business continuity depends on those two factors the shortest the rpo and rtos are you will have more availability of your business so if i specifically talk about the rpo in my slide on the left hand side if you can see how back you can recover your data means as a business organization how you will judge uh, your data when it comes to a disaster how back you can go this is called rpo and how much time does it recover to your data when it comes to a disaster that is called rto so being an organization every organization has set some kind of rtos and rpos we as a veem we uh, say or we confirm or we guarantee that if you are using veem uh, best practices as described by v as designed by v the rpos and rtos for your organization for your business will always be equal to or less than 15 minutes means in case of a disaster of your let's organize or your data center is down wherever it is sitting you can recover your data 15 in 15 minutes and you can go back only 15 minutes means your data availability is less than 15 minutes so for you as an organization whenever you are designing a business continuity platform using any backup application you need to make sure that those two factors are uh, included in it which is rpos and rtos now when we say disaster right you don't know when the disaster can happen any time that disaster can happen and you are not sure so there may be earthquakes there may be storms and floods there may be accidental fire and nowadays which is happening a lot a malicious attack ransomware attacks so to prevent your data to make sure that the business continuity is running 24 by 7 you need to protect your data right how you can do this you need to design a strategy you need to design your recovery timeline right so this slide is a kind of uh, showcasing uh, where we will say that rpos and rtos are the most important part of your um, of your strategy of preventing your data so if you see on the left hand side data loss which is called rpo how much data loss your organization can afford in terms of a, uh, when it comes to a disaster right then on the right hand side if you go beyond it your sorry so that's your reaction time right reaction time wherein you don't have availability of your service so as i said we as a veem will give you a guarantee that 15 minutes is your rpos and rtos so that 15 minutes let's say 5 minutes you don't have availability or 10 minutes you don't have availability of your production services then with limited means what we did that using veem we have switched on couple of critical applications so which gives you your rtos that your couple of important applications are up and running that's called instant restore if i go deep dive in technical in veem language right so means 
what we are doing here that with couple of features with couple of technologies we are making sure if your data is available in somewhere in backup platform we will instantaneously restore your data so that at least your um, environment is up and running and then when you want to fully recover your data center that's called full restore right at the back end we take care of this right so that is called full restore i'll show you in my demo what am i meaning about this so this is called the entire slide is called rpos plus rtos which uh, conclude to recovery timeline now we have talked about the concepts how does it supposed to work but when it comes to the real world what exactly microsoft and veeam is talking about when it comes to the business continuity right in slides it look very nice but when it comes to the real world how it works so with microsoft uh, along with veeam this is one of the you know i would say the greatest alliances veeam has with microsoft wherein uh, veeam jointly uh, delivers solutions based on microsoft platform some of the you know uh, fastest and stronger solutions which microsoft provide is veeam backup for microsoft office 365 to azure you can backup office 365 platform everything onto an azure vm the cloud tier integration to azure when i say cloud tier like azure blob you can integrate it with veeam then we have something called direct restore to azure if you are using veeam you are sitting on premise or you are hybrid without any vpn you can directly restore your workload onto microsoft azure then we have veeam backup for microsoft azure itself it's a native backup tool for which we are also going a demo uh, also going to do a demo today uh, wherein specifically to azure vms we are uh, doing a backup we are protecting their data and we are making sure that the business continuity runs so these are couple of important products uh, of microsoft with which veeam integrates very well how it works let's talk about it so the first tier is veeam cloud tier to microsoft azure what exactly it is so if we talk about business challenges in today's world the digital universal is universe is doubling every 2 years and as the data grows and changes so the cost for securing managing and storing it as i said in the beginning that your organization is using applications is using different different types of phenomena right and every application every compute generates data right today's data is becoming a term which is expanding like anything and for your organization the important thing is your data you want to maintain your data for 5 years for 10 years for 20 years depends on your company policy right and to maintain that type of data securely it becomes in cost right so how you can protect your entire data in today's world there are lots of organization which uses different different type of strategies so with using veeam and microsoft how you can make sure that your data is available for the business continuity the at the bottom there are so couple of you know factors which you can consider while designing your strategy it's first of all the high availability high availability means uh, your data should be available uh, just in case one zone goes down cost effective cloud based storage you need to have a cost effective solution wherein you can uh, you know uh, store your data Uh, you want to see your data whenever you want means granular file level restore you want and you need greater productivity so how we can do it with veeam cloud tier as i said we have a native object storage integration for example if you are an on premise customer and you want to keep your data for let's say 10 year and to keep 10 years data you don't have space available in your on premise data center you can integrate your data center with azure blob and you can either keep a copy there or archive your entire data onto azure blob storage right without creating any site to site vpn everything is being taken care by veeam right and as you all know that in azure it's an unlimited capacity azure gives you unlimited capacity for infinite period you want to keep data for 10 years 12 years 20 years 30 years i don't know how many years let it be there right and that data is safe and secured also and when it comes to cost 
right? Cost is the important factor. No double charges. We will not charge you anything to utilize Azure Flow. It's a native feature of the product which you can utilize when you buy Veeam licenses along with it, you get it, right? And as far as I know with my limited knowledge on um, uh, Azure, I guess for uploading, there are no charges, only downloading, there are charges. Uh, then uh, this is for the on-premise customers. Uh, most of us, most of you who are already using Veeam, they know that it's a disk-based backup solution. Uh, there is no vendor locking. You can uh, use anything when it comes to backup storage, a shared drive, a SAN, a NAS, a DAS, a dedupe appliance, anything is possible, right? Uh, uh, now in Veeam, we have something called uh, scale-out backup repository, which is a cloud tier, right? So in Veeam, when you are using a scale-out backup repository, what it means, it's a logical storage, which is a combination of on-premise storage plus a cloud storage. That cloud storage can be uh, Azure Blob, that cloud storage can be S3 bucket or any other compatible S3 uh, cloud storages. So we are here specific to Azure Blob. For example, in your uh, scenario to have your business continuity up and running and wherein your company says that your retention is for 20 years. So for 20 years, let's say you cannot keep 20 years data on your on-premise disk forever because it becomes a very heavy cost for you. So what you do, you keep your recent data onto an on-premise disk when it comes to on-premise infrastructure and then the remaining data you move out to a Azure block, right? So with this, what are you achieving that your archive data is sitting in Azure block safely uh, and your on-premise recent data is sitting on your uh, on your on-premise disk. So what, how does Veeam Cloud Tier work? So scale out backup repository, as I said, is a combination of two storages. So in Veeam language, the first storage, the on-premise storage, we call it as a performance tier, which is being used for your recent restoration. Uh, then the second one is your capacity tier. Capacity tier wherein you are archiving the data. That capacity tier is your Microsoft Azure block storage. So to achieve this infrastructure, you don't have to uh, create a VPN, side-to-side -side VPN between on-premise and your Azure blob. It's a native feature of Veeam, right? So this is your Veeam cloud tier. Uh, with this, you can move all this backup. You can do a policy-based backup. You can do a long-term archiving. It's space sufficient. When I say space sufficient, Veeam does compression and dedupe at job level. So bare minimum 50% compression we achieve for structured or unstructured data. So if you have 10 TB of production data, that becomes 5 TB automatically when Veeam processes the data. And the same 5 TB get, goes on to your Azure blob. So here you are saving when it comes to space also. Right? So the second part is the direct restore to Microsoft Azure. We, as a Veeam, gives you a functionality to directly restore your infrastructure to Azure itself. What exactly it means? If we talk about a use case, what is your business challenge? Your business challenge as an IT pro is to move your data or maybe kind of DR your data uh, instantaneously, either from on-premise to cloud or cloud to on-premise, both ways it can work. So for an IT pro, it's a problem that how he can achieve this, right? He has to, when it comes to, there are lots of, you know, uh, assumptions in the market wherein the guy says, if you want to move your data onto a cloud, it becomes a hassle, right? For example, if you are running one virtual machine on-premise on a Hyper-V, and if you want to move it onto an Azure, for you, it, it becomes a challenge, right? Uh, you don't see an easy path because nowadays we always think about an easy path, how uh, much, you know, how less we can do and how fast we can achieve with the solution. This is what we always think. So with Microsoft and Veeam, what we can do, we can move or migrate your workload from on-premise to Azure uh, seamlessly using one centralized cloud, using one centralized console. How we can do it? 
for example if you are sitting in on premise and you want you are migrating your entire workload to microsoft azure and you see some challenges in it right there are some application which you see is not able to uh, you know kind of reinstall there are some legacy application which you don't want to re reinstall uh, it's running either on windows platform or on linux platform so with vim what you can do you can take a backup on premise and with the same vim console you see some utility called uh, direct restore to azure when you click on this direct restore to azure you see some parameters which you need to define with this you can directly restore that vm which is running on premise to microsoft azure so there are lots of organization which uses vim as a migration tool also right so your backup is your workload is running on premise you want to move on to cloud you want to do it as easy as possible take a backup of your on premise uh, load and restore on to azure it's a seamless integration once again to achieve this feature vim direct restore you don't need any side to side vpn between cloud and on premise everything is being taken care by vim it's a native feature of vim comes along with the product right now the cloud mobility right as i said uh, in my previous slide that you want to move your data right it's a hybrid environment either you want to run your data on premise either you want to run your data on cloud or you want to do a mix and match of both so in a scenario wherein you want to achieve a feature of mix and match of both which is hybrid environment you need to have that type of mechanism wherein you can shift your workload either from on premise to cloud or from cloud to on premise so you need a mechanism wherein you can kind of achieve a portability of your data whenever your time comes when when whenever requirement comes so what you do the challenges with the cloud mobility which you see as of today the portability of workload some workload which is running on azure and let's say you want to move it on to an on premise just for some testing purposes and all just for some maybe uh, i don't know maybe for dev and testing uh, how easily you can move it protecting your workload across cloud you need one centralized platform with the help of which you can uh, Uh, you can uh, you know uh, maybe protect both the workloads long term retention cost and processes you want to keep your data for longer term recovery to cloud destination you need a single click to recover your data onto a cloud the solution is very easy vim gives you a portable backup file which can be restored anywhere whether you want to restore on cloud on azure whether you want to restore on premise whether you want to restore on a virtualized platform everything is possible integrated management experience for all destinations one centralized management only one console wherein you are seeing everything you are seeing your on premise backup jobs running you are seeing your cloud backup jobs running you are seeing your uh, restoration jobs are running whether it comes to cloud or on premise everything is just one single console you don't have to go here and there cloud intelligent data retention policies the entire product of veeam is fully integrated with microsoft azure you can see all the parameters of azure in the veeam cloud console when it comes to restoration of an uh, workload means you can see which compute you want to choose you can see which network you want to put in you can see which managed disk you want to put in you can customize your resources when you are restoring on to cloud everything is all possible using wing then a simple dr to the cloud with no format change if you are running on premise hyper v environment on azure also you will have same hyper v vm with no format change it's in wing we have one universal format uh, wherein we save the backup file called dot vbk which is being used for full uh, backup the same dot vbk file is a portable backup format can be used anywhere right uh, mobility 47% of the id leaders in today's world are concerned about the portability of data as i mentioned previously veeam is a portable backup very easy to restore whether you want to on premise or on azure uh, 
it it gives you a complete visibility to have your business continuity running 24 by 7 uh, you can use it for testing environment dev environment everything mobility becomes very easy when you use veeam on azure uh, the last part is the direct restore uh, which we have discussed as i said on the left hand side this is my backup file which is sitting in veeam backup repository uh, using veeam i can directly restore it to azure as um, a vm uh, regardless what you are running inside it uh, so in veeam what we say that if you have taken a backup using veeam product right and uh, later if you are not using veeam we don't lock you in with any kind of restore uh, functionality whether regardless you have the licenses of veeam or not you can restore any data which is being backed up by veeam at later stage also right you don't need any licenses to restore a uh, veeam product so you can use veeam backup and replication which is a main tool which does backup and replication of veeam you can use this tool to restore it to azure you can use veeam backup community edition which is a free tool to restore any product to azure you can use veeam agents for windows and linux to restore it to azure means with all these three tools you get flexibility to restore your data onto microsoft azure free of cost uh, now specific to microsoft azure there are lots of customers who are running their workload on cloud itself right and when it comes to microsoft microsoft gives you an sla for their services they gives you an sla to run to have their infrastructure up and running for i guess 99.9% .9 of the time but when it comes to data right data is your responsibility microsoft clearly says that the compute the vm which you have hosted is up and running but the data which is inside your compute which is being generated by your applications that is your responsibility so as a customer you need to make sure you need to design your infrastructure in such a way that it should be highly available that the data is available on all the zones if one zone goes down at least second one should take care accordingly you also need to take care of your data you need to make sure that you have a copy of your data available on your premise right so how you can achieve this using veeam specifically for microsoft azure you can use it uh, for backing up your data with one single console it's an azure native infrastructure as a protection tool wherein we are taking azure snapshots and taking a backup using azure infrastructure onto an azure blob storage when we say azure blob storage automatically the cost comes into your mind because it is very cost effective solution with my limited knowledge what i understood that azure blob is the cheapest storage available in entire microsoft stack so the azure blob storage is the cheapest storage wherein you can keep your data for long term retention and obviously where security becomes a major priority for every organization with veeam for my uh, sunny sorry to interrupt um, sorry to so, so sorry to interrupt can we uh, i mean uh, fast track this and can we get on to the demo oh yeah actually yes L let yeah. me let me do this let me do this so just let me quick track. yes yeah and let quickly start the demo and then we will give some space for the q and a's as well yeah Done, done. So let me quickly go ahead with the demo. Uh, Veeam infrastructure uh, for this. So let me just quickly show you. I have already created one infrastructure document. So this is a tool which we have installed on Veeam infrastructure. Uh, this is a web based tool uh, which is being installed here. So let me just quickly log in. This is Veeam specifically to back up your Azure VMs. If you see, this is how it looks like when you first time log in uh, and when you install before going on to this tool, let me just go quickly to Azure and show you how it works. So this is my Azure console. And if you go to marketplace, you see something called uh, uh, Veeam for Microsoft Azure. If you 
click on to this. It's a pre-configured appliance, free to back up your 10 VMs. Uh, if you see here, let it come. So you just need to click on create. It automatically installed a pre-configured appliance in your environment. So when you install it's an Ubuntu based uh, machine, which takes care of your entire data. Okay, uh, so when it comes to VM, this is how it looks like. This is a web-based tool with the public IP I have logged in. Uh, this is my user. So when you first time log in, you see something called configuration. These are the simple steps which you have to take care. Only five steps which you need to configure to make sure your backup is up and running. If you see, first one is to add your Microsoft Azure connection, which I will quickly do it from here. If you see here in the instances, you can see this is the instance which we have got, which we have, um, which we are protecting actually. So if you see in the account, you can see Azure account. Let me edit. This is what you need to do. Name your Azure subscription, whatever you want to do. Click on next. Uh, click on the Azure. You need to create one service account. That service account should have access to your entire tenant. The services are mentioned, the permissions are mentioned in the help center document, which you can see. Just click on next. Once your um, service account is being added, what you can do, you can see all the VMs which are running on that tenant itself. So once the service account is being added, after that, you need to add the repository. Repository is a place wherein we are storing a backup. So specific for uh, Azure VM, it should be an Azure blob. So I've already added one of the Azure blob in my case. Just click on edit, name your Azure blob repository, click on next, click on next. If you want to enable encryption for the security. So here we have defined a repository name. So in my case, I'm using the same tenant for my repository. If you want to use a different tenant for your backup repository just to save your safeguard your data, that can be a different reason. You can also do that, right? So once the repository, this is my Azure Blob repository, which is being added where I'll store the backup. And then the last part is the worker. Worker uh, is a auxiliary Linux VM, which Veeam creates when you install uh, a Veeam backup for Azure platform. This worker is a kind of backup proxy which processes your data. This comes up when you run a job and this goes down when you close the job, right? So what it means, worker is the important part uh, of your backup infrastructure. So let's quickly go and uh, configure one backup policy. So if you see, this is my main dashboard wherein you can see a couple of you know uh, widgets and all. Uh, let's quickly go to policy. In policy, if you see, I have already created one policy. Let me edit this policy. So if you see um, as a policy, what you need to do, you need to name your policy. Uh, and after that, whatever name you want to give, click on directory, which subscription you have, then su whatever subscription, if you have added one subscription, you can see if you added multiple subscription, you can drop and down here, which region is it? So you need to add it the region where your uh, VMs are running. So my VMs are running on UAE not specify resources. What do you want to back up, right? For me, I, I can use all resources or I can use any of the resources from subscription resource, virtual machine or from tax. So I want to back up one VM out of this. Uh, anything if you want to exclude. Uh, let's say if you want to back up entire resource group, something which you don't want to back up, you can exclude uh, snapshot. Uh, how many snapshots you want? You can skip this step also if you don't want a recent restore. This is taking a snapshot of your VM, right? So for instant restore, if you want, you want to achieve 15 minutes of RPOs or lesser than that, you can keep some snapshots here, whether one or 10 depends on your requirement. Then the next one is the backup settings. This is where you define your blob repository. For once the backup is done, where do you want to save the data? It should be in my Azure blob repository, which I named it, and how many retentions you want. You are, in my case, I have kept 10 days. You can keep 100 days. You can keep months. You can keep years. Depends on you, right? Depends on your strategy. 
then the important part this is the most important part for you guys cost estimation once you configure all those things how much approximate cost does it going to incur you right here you can see in my case it is 00 dollar because the subscription which i am using that is some different subscription but when it comes to your subscription wherein it is associated with the cost you can see some cost parameters will come here so with this what does it mean with veeam whenever you are backing up your uh, azure infrastructure using veeam you are already uh, in control of your cost that approximately how much cost does it going to incur right once you are done with it done click on policy settings you see that how much you know um, how much uh, uh, frequency of the data or you want to mention that's it just click on next and do a backup once you do this the backup will start running in my case i have already done a backup i am short of time so let me quickly show you the important part once the backup is being successfully done you can see something here will come up which says the protected data this is your veeam backed up file which is sitting in uh, which is sitting in your azure blob repository now once the backup is successfully done you get two type of restoration option either you can do an entire vm restore or you can do a disk restore or you can do a file level recovery if you click on vm restore you can see this is how it looks like this is my restore point if you want to do an point in time recovery you can choose any one of it you can see where from where the data can come i3 snapshots are sitting on azure blob repository and i have enabled one snapshot for quick restoration that is azure snapshot so if you want to use this up to you right and uh, once you click on next you can see the restore mode where do you want to restore it you can choose the subscription right so in my case i only have one subscription so it will show you only one subscription restore to the original location restore to a new location so let's say if you want to restore to a new location you can see there are some parameters on the left hand side which are visible right subscription instance this you can customize all those options whenever you want so this gives you a flexibility of doing all those things so see you can choose which subscription you want to choose in my case i have only added one subscription but in your case if you have multiple you can add it to so cross region uh, you know um, restoration is possible etc etc let me quickly go to file level recovery with file level recovery you can restore a single file from azure vm just click on next start that's it it will open an explorer wherein you can see all the files this is coming from azure blob repository uh, repository so it can take couple of seconds in the meantime last thing which i just wanted to show you since it's an integrated product it can integrate with the on premise veeam backup replication as well so this is my on premise veeam backup replication server which is running on premise it has nothing to do with uh, azure so if you see uh, in the backup infrastructure if i come you can see something called external repository right so in the external repository this the same repository as your blob repository which we have created on the azure itself you can add it here and you can use it for restoration so that you can achieve the portability just i am just clicking on edit repository which you can see here uh it will come up let me again do so it's running uh, on my lab and my lab is uh, slow on resources so that's why it is coming like this just click on next put your credentials tenant credentials here once you click on next it will automatically detect the repository which is being presented in the azure and it will automatically show you something like this which is about to come yes so once you click on this this is my container i am not using any encryption that's it click on apply once you click on apply you can see something like this which is being added here once it is being added here come to your home you can see a backup these are my backed up files you can see something called external repository and in external repository you can see this is your backup file if i right click on this these are the restoration options which you see if you click on instant vm recovery you can 
instantly recover your data which is sitting on Azure S, uh, Azure Blob and you can run that onto any virtualization platform whether VMware, Hyper-V, it is possible. You can see you can add your host here and instantly you can run your VM. So my purpose is to show you how easy it is with Veeam uh, to use it for Azure platform and how quickly it works. Uh, so that's this is what I wanted to show you. I have fast tracked it as much as I can. Uh, I hope this would be informative for you. And if you have any questions related with it, let me see if we have. So from my side, that's all. All right. Uh, if we don't have any questions, I think uh, we are good to conclude. Uh, thank you guys for the uh, presentation. Uh, thank you, CDW team, Rad, Matt, Gil. And thank you, Sunny and Shoeb.